Welcome to TikTok Shop Insiders Podcast, your source for actionable news, trends, and strategies. If you want to build a thriving brand or creator presence on TikTok Shop, this is your essential listen. Let's get started. All right. Welcome, everyone, to TikTok Shop Insiders Podcast, your source for the latest news and strategies for TikTok Shop. I'm your host, Ivan, and we have a special guest today. Her name is Jacqueline. She is a TikTok Shop affiliate. Hi, Jacqueline. How you doing? Hi, how are you guys doing? Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. So just to summarize here, Jack, Jacqueline and I connected on Twitter. Um, you know, she's sharing her story on on there as well as other channels, but caught my eye on Twitter and she's been killing it, right? She had a six-figure month. She has kind of teaching people how to do it and kind of really making some moves uh, on the on the TikTok shop affiliate space. So um, we're going to dive into her story just right now. So, um, hope you don't mind that. Does that sound good, Jacqueline? Awesome. Yes. Let's get to it. Okay. Well, I always like to start with, you know, a little bit of background in yourself, you know, kind of before TikTok shop, what did that look like? And then transitioning into like TikTok shop, how'd you guys, how'd you get mixed up into there? Okay. So basically, um, growing up, I've always had a fascination with making money online. Ever since I was like in middle school, I would always get into, uh, I actually got into affiliate marketing at first. And um, I found out like these little channels where um, you would just like link things. And I actually got introduced. That's when, um, oh, this is a little bit further down the line, but uh, let me backtrack a little bit. So when I was little, I actually saw like these, uh, surveys where you do it online and you yep. get like uh commissions for that or something like that when you make surveys and you make money so like that was like my first taste of like cents or money made online right and i was just very intrigued with it and i was like i did not know like that was a thing like i was always told yeah. growing up that you would need a job growing up and uh, have a full time like nine to five like and my mom was a teacher and my grandma was a teacher so i was going down that track mm-hmm. of uh, wanting to become a teacher when i grew up so then when i went to college um covid hit so I actually was majoring in uh, liberal studies to become a teacher. But when COVID hit, I actually came across something like a finance area on YouTube. And yep. I like found out about like stocks, affiliate marketing, Amazon FBA, drop shipping, all that stuff. Right. So I was like, wow, like I want to try this. Like this is right. something that always interested me ever since I was young. So I went into that and I actually um, started going all in on drop shipping so I started doing that from 2020 to 2023. Um, I was just running a bunch of stores, doing it like all the other dropshippers, testing all these trending products, um, running these ads on Facebook, and then tw- TikTok became a thing, so then running ads on there. Um, and then that's when I came across TikTok Shop Affiliate, where there's these people just cutting out all like the expenses of doing fulfillment, cost of goods, and a uh, paying for like um virtual assistants and all they're doing is just making videos for these products and they're just getting commissions off of what they made off of the video right so um that intrigued me and i was like, okay let me go let me try this um i made videos back when i was doing drop shipping and i made my own creatives i never like outsourced to that or anything so i kind of had that upper hand um so then when i went into tiktok shop affiliate by first month i ended up doing it with uh, fifteen thousand dollars in profit, which was right. crazy because within the three years I was doing drop shipping, I never made that much of profit in my bank account. Right. Uh, it was always just like revenue days that I would get. So that literally was just an eye opening experience for me, saying, "Wow, you can make money from this!" Like I didn't know this was something that you can make like a job off of or something like that. Right. So um, I ended up going all in. Um, the next few months, the next month, I hit a. $80,000 month. And then that next month after that, I had my big month, which was $100,000. Oh my goodness. Okay. Wait, I have so many questions. Let's <laughs> pause there. Um, awesome stuff so far. And now I'll recap a little bit similar to like any entrepreneur's journey, right? But you know, you have these ideas that come up about, you know, in your life, you know, drop chipping is one of them. You kind of pursue that and you see a little bit of success and you just, you know, see other things that are in, in the similar arena, right? TikTok, TikTok shop. And you're like, wait a minute, I can try that. And you see success in it. Right. And so that's one thing, you know, similar to my journey, I did Amazon at, to start and I saw success there. And then you see TikTok shop and you're like, wait a minute, this is, this could be even huge. And then you try it a little bit and then all you, exactly. well, next thing you know, it's a five figure, six figure month of, like yeah. you say, all profit. Um, so first, congratulations. You know, Thank it's you hard so thing much. to do. Um, but yeah, I'm glad to see you kind of that, that success. Um, 
cool cool okay so i have so many questions but let's see where to start um okay so your first win take me back to like your first videos that you made and obviously the first unless the first one was a success like what are some of your first videos what are some like did you have to power through to get to that you know success like what took me back to that for those first videos that you made yeah so honestly i felt like i was really lucky with the first batch of videos that i made because i did it on like this trending product that i found on the little tiktok tiktok marketplace Mm -hmm. and um the first video i kind of based it off of how i made my ads so i didn't really that much to go i didn't have that much to go off of in in terms of like content creation of format of how like tiktok likes it um so i was just like okay let me just go off of what i know and the first video was really really educational but it ended up taking off the first video that very I first video okay very cool. first video it was uh, like 100k views and i immediately saw that that day and i was like oh my gosh like yeah, this is crazy like yeah. so um from then on i just started duplicating what that video was doubling down on that um do you yeah, use that I... method today that format today that video format today or um, no or i've or actually whatever. yeah i switch it up um every few weeks because there's like different things that comes across tiktok that like catches people's eyes more um back then what i did was just stay more on the educational side of just talking more about the product and how it's helped me so i was just hitting more on like the the emotions of people back then i still do that now uh but more it's it's more like storytelling now than more of like a logical side of the product I love it. I love it. Okay. And then, so you got that first video. It's also some, some success. And then like, what's kind of like your big success? Like what's the kind of biggest one after that first video? I would say uh, the next one, uh, I feel like with success, it's different for, uh, for others. But for me, it was like seeing that the numbers increase, um, not just like the, on the dashboard, but the views from the video. Um, Mm -hmm. And every single time I would see that, I would just base videos off of that point and um, add a little bit more to it to, to what I think it would add more um, information or help people convert better um, because I know that there's interest in the product. So I was like, okay, I just need to double down on people's insecurities with the product or how it could help them um, and vice versa. So that's just what I double down on that. Okay. So and same like, product, same product, yeah. just, okay. Just kind of yeah. continuing the education, the videos. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, testing different styles with it. And then the following month, I actually found another winner and I started doubling down on that one. And when that one came across, I actually came across like a week later, another winner. So it was just two winners in that month that made that month grow exponentially. So it wasn't this, just one product anymore. This was in March. Uh, So March was the 15K one. And then the two products that took off was in April that that, okay. that gave me that 80k month. Very cool, very yeah. cool. I love it. I love it. Okay, so you went in searching for products. You made videos, and one popped off, uh, and then you just made more videos uh, of that same product, changing it a little bit. Um, what was that format like? You said it was more educational, but like, what were some of the structural things that you had behind the video right it's, you know hooks calls to action stories like what did that look like when you created those videos yeah so uh during that time i recently found out like there's so many different content styles you can go off of like yeah. there's voiceovers there's you just talking to the camera and making a testimonial um there's you just showing the product and i just played around with all those stuff okay um, but so the pretty one wide right it's yeah very wide, wide range um but the one that started taking off was like the voiceovers because I can make the voice fast paced as well as the video itself. So I noticed that the faster clips that you have for the videos, it keeps the attention uh, for the viewers to keep watching. So that's what helped me. And then that's when I'd start throwing in the benefits of the product in between. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So it's just kind of like testing out a wide range and seeing what works for you. Yeah. Um, okay. So those are some of the highs, but what are some of the lows, right? So you get these 80 K months and inevitably it's not going to keep that route rap range. Um, either some low months, like videos not getting seen. What do you think for yourself? This is a common question from affiliates yeah. that I get. It's like, I have great times and it's not so great. And so I'm not going to make videos anymore and they kind of fall off. Like exactly. what are the things that you think about when you don't have those views, you don't have those sales? Like what, what, what do you fall back on? Yeah, so definitely the main thing that I've learned about this is that it's 
it's organic. It's everything's not, of course, given to you. It's, of course, going to be based on virality, how good your videos are. And that can flop sometimes. And that's understandable. So the main thing that I knew going into this is mindset is a really big thing. Um, the more that you put yourself down for having these views or these uh, dashboard numbers, you see them go down, it will impact for, for me personally, it impacted the way that I would make my videos. So okay. if I came across it as like, oh, I'm not doing that good. And I would try to make videos that same day. The videos wouldn't be as good as so they the were. vibe is necessary. Exactly. Like the yeah. So the mindset, yeah. The mindset is everything when I'm uh, playing into this. And usually I just like block the numbers now out now at this point. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's good to look at, but I'm focusing more on the inputs than the, uh, than the okay. output of it. What are those inputs for you? Yeah. So basically for me, I take things to like journaling. I journal a lot and I say a lot of affirmations okay. Um, and like I meditate and that's helped me get into that flow state and that mind state of like, okay, you can do this. Like yeah. you, you have like the ideas it's going to come to your brain. You just have to film it right. And like see what's working already and implement that to your videos. So that's what goes through my mind. So correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So one asked, I've talked to other uh, affiliates and one of the things they say, it's like a num a certain number of videos created per day, right? They do like four per day or, you know, X number per week. Is that something you abide by or is it kind of like more mindset, like get yourself in the groove and then that'll kind of take care of itself? Yeah. So I feel like depending on like how much content you put out, I feel like it's more about the quality than the quantity, okay. the, the better that you have your videos. Like you could be posting one a day, but those videos are really, really good. And you think that you did really, really good in those videos. And that's better than just trying to pump out. Oh, I need to pump out like four a day and they're not good at all. Okay. So it's just like the mental framework prior to the video, setting yourself up. Hey, like really believing in the format that you're putting across. Mm -hmm. And then that'll kind of translate in the video and then into the sales. Yeah. And then uh, of course, like, yeah, there's like research to seeing what's already working with other people, like uh, with yep. other products, you can implement that with your videos as well. Yeah. That leads to my next question of product selection, right? You have a handful of, or I'm sorry, you have a mountain of products out there. You have a, your inbox is probably overloaded every day and you have great brands reaching out to you and not so great brands. Like what's your product selection look like? How do you see success, you know, past these like messages that are being sent to you? Yeah, so I definitely have like a rule book for myself when I'm okay. working with brands or trying to look for products. I look for products that have a lot in stock just in case a video does go viral. You don't want them to not have any more stock because then that's stopping you from making more money. So look mm -hmm. how much stock they have, how much they sold at least like a thousand units sold just so they can have traction. So when someone clicks on that product, they can see that other people have bought it. Um, I'd also look at the re uh, the review or like the the reviews of the product, seeing how much stars it has. Mm -hmm. um, and then the videos that already are made for that specific product. So if I can see that people already have viral videos for this product, I can build off of those to help me make my videos even better. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So that's an ongoing list. Any other items on your list that you can think of? Uh, but those are really good ones, you know, um, all yeah. kind of basis. If you don't have one of these, your video is essentially gone to waste or, you don't have a fighting chance or it's a better fighting chance if you have all those things. Exactly. Yeah. I just feel like it's, I'm trying to think of more of like in a customer perspective, if I saw this okay. video on my feed and I saw this video and I, I looked at the product and it doesn't have like that many units sold, I wouldn't trust it. Right. So I'm just thinking in the customer's mind, like what would they, what would entice them to buy this right now? Translate, right. Um, something I've been noticing in the space and probably you in the affiliate side also, it's like supplements. And like, it's maybe uh, like a, like a red flag nowadays, right? Because like you talk about a supplement, you can get banned as an affiliate, right? You talk about it wrong, you have claims, et cetera. And even if like, you don't have any claims, TikTok's algorithm can deem that you did say something and ban your account, right? So do you work on supplements? Is that something you're, you're thinking about or how does that play in your products? Like, uh, yeah. So um, supplements, I have worked with a lot in the past and I've had, uh, success with them as well i feel like it it all depends on like the way that tiktok does its violations right because i feel like recently it's been no matter what you say you have to be careful what you say and how you phrase it they're very touchy with the certain words you say and claiming that it's going to for sure happen for the customer and stuff like that it's all just uh making sure that whatever product you have that it is uh 
it would translate well in a video to where it wouldn't get you violations. So for example, like there's this product that I was working with that has something to do with bloating. And a lot of people's angles would be something like losing weight. And that's something that TikTok does not like. A lot of people would get violations for that. And a lot of people get their accounts taken down for that in that reason. So you just kind of had to think outside the box of, hey, what are some maybe words that like the TikTok AI would not catch on? Like, you know, that's when like slang words come in. Like instead of saying like a big belly, you could say words like foompa or floompa, Mm -hmm. something like that, like something that's going to be hidden, but a slang that people would still understand. So mm-hmm. it, in that case, I would really uh, search up uh, the reviews or products like on Amazon or something like that and see how these people are talking about how they affected their problems and maybe that's see cool. the types of slings that they have in there. Yeah, that's a great, like I, I've heard that before, but looking at Amazon reviews, good and bad, and addressing that in your videos, talking about it, you know, talking about the, the product. I think, you know, in summary also, it's just be super careful what you say. Um, there is a term like, uh, results may vary make making sure to include that in your kind of um in your script etc mm-hmm. um very cool i guess now that you mentioned you know your your process you know your your successes you know in um, you know your 80k month and then your biggest month of all was a six figure 100k month like take us back to that point what did that video look like or what did that was it on the back of one video one product or like a, a, just your hard work over time like take us to that 100k month like how did it start off yeah, so definitely it was one video that popped off, but there was still some videos that were still trickling in some sales in there. But I feel like mm-hmm. what, what this video does is that how I filmed it was it was the one video that I did not script. It was something that I just came off of the top of my head. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, like when I uploaded, I did, I thought that it wasn't going to do very well, <laughs> but it ended up that ended up carrying me that whole entire month. Yeah. Um, And that specific uh video style was something different that I haven't done before. It was just me talking about unboxing the product and it was just me unboxing the product and talking about it. And that one just really took off. And I feel like not only that, like showing more the genuine side of me instead of just like scripting out videos and like Mm -hmm. reading off of something and like recording, this is me just, yeah, more authentic. And I feel like more people picked up on that when I was doing that as well as, um, the product that I picked it did have a really high commissions. Yeah. So that also helped okay. with that, that month. The, the, the money behind it. Um, awesome, awesome. Yeah, one thing I, I, I wanted to talk to you about was one thing we preach and we do for our clients and our brands is cultivation of successful affiliates or even, you know, any affiliate, right? Um, that brand and brands you work with, like what would you say would, you know, what what draws you to making more content for brands? Like, what are some of the things that brands do for you or that you like hearing from brands? Or, you know, what are some things that you see? Like, when you have, you have this success, like, from your eyes, like, how does a brand kind of keep you, you know, in their circle and their, on their radar? Yeah. So, for, for my point of view, I feel like brands that really care about um, their creators, such as, like, just, like, talking to them, being like, hey, like, these are some videos that have been working for us and I think it would okay. do really good for your style specifically because they really pay attention to the type of videos that I do it's very different from someone else's and they would say hey like this video looks like more your style you can try this I think it would really work really well another thing that they do is like I give them ad codes and they run ads yep. for it so that's just another thing that gets me more views more money in their pockets as well as mine and then just right. push that out even more that's something I also look for um, and then just like incentives, some brands that I've worked with has like, okay, if you hit this amount of GME, GMV in this month, um, we can like get you a plaque or like if you hit this mm-hmm. amount of GMV in this month, like we can get you a trip or something like that. Yeah, so that's, bonus. yeah, exactly. So having these incentives really like helps me want to get to that level for that brand. Right. As well as like, um, feeling like they really know me as in the as in the term of like, they, they watch my videos. Like it's not just like another foot they push to the side and be right. like, yeah, do this. How many brands would you say you're quote unquote close with? that kind of have that maybe you trust or kind of in their circle or. Um, I do. I'm working with a few now. Um, I would say like I have real three really good brands that I really like right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, any lives? I know lives is huge. I know, you know, um, is that something you focus on or not really? 
Um, not really. I've not okay. really tried lives. I've just more focused on just like the posting aspect right. of everything. Um, I've Thanks just so. found more success with that. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of like niches, uh, mm-hmm. you mentioned product selection. I've talked with someone and they focus on candies and snacks and stuff. What are some of the areas, categories that you uh, enjoy creating videos for? Oh, yeah. Success? So, mm-hmm. yeah. So the the niche that I really like is beauty and personal care. And I just feel like it, it fits in more with me. It's also the aspect of like, okay, what would someone see? Like, I look like someone that would like do makeup or something like that. So I was like, okay, let me go in this area. Mm-hmm. As regards to like, if I try to go into fitness, I don't really like work out or anything like that. It wouldn't it wouldn't match like the demographic of what I'm trying right. to hit. So um, it's more of like, what niches would I think that I enjoy as well as what I what would I look good doing or promoting in that sense? Yeah, yeah. I'll, like one one kind of underlying oh and that i'm getting from like speaking with you it's like it's really about a vibe right and it's like that carries through um on, on the video right so mm-hmm. you know a product uh brand is very important to you right the mindset going into creating the video is very important and it kind of sets you up in that video right because people look at videos and it's doesn't necessarily equate like emotions or you know um, kind of feelings behind it but like it does carry through like you're kind of an example of like that's you know, something that, that happens from like your mindset all the way through the product selection because you need to feel natural about it, talking natural about it. And you, people see those videos and they can really tell the difference. So that's one thing I'm kind of taking away. So, yeah, um, exactly. Um, yeah. I, I, I would just speak on that a little bit. Sure. Um, there, yeah, there are some like people that like they just try and find the products with the highest amount of commissions, yep. but they aren't very connected to it. So they're thinking, oh, why isn't this video going viral or anything like that? It's because they are they don't really understand the product some people just choose a product just because of the money behind it but i feel like that like you mentioned it translates in the video and shows that you're not interested in it and it would see people to just click off and just keep scrolling right right so let's say i'm sure you've um started a couple of your friends and family maybe or people have reached to you online like what are your top one or two tips for them in this journey like starting out their journey they have their account they're created you know they they have potential products in mind like what are some tips that you have for their first couple of videos or mindset or you know scheduling or something like that like what do you think is for for advice from you yeah so definitely mindset plays a big part in a lot of people that i've seen making these big amounts of money because okay. um so i feel like being able to set certain like like expectations for yourself not thinking that like just because like you see that someone's doing that that you're going to do it that first month too it always always comes to like putting down the effort how much reps you have going into it because even if like someone for example like I put my friend on it she Mm -hmm. has not made a video before in her life so it's something that she has to get used to doing and it's something that like she's not comfortable doing I was like so the more reps you do um the better that you'll get just keep studying these viral videos uh especially with the same ones as a product and then you can build off of that in your videos like some things that I tell them is like the hook is the most important part because you need someone to stick in within the first three seconds and that will keep keep them watching the video and then um their attention will go higher and then they'll push they'll push the video out even more so um yeah I definitely tell them uh work on the hooks hooks that are like trending right now that will grab people's attention um as well as getting more comfortable as in pretend like you're talking to your friend on camera um that's the easiest way i can think about it um if you're like on uh facetime with your friend how would you explain this product to them and how would you tell them to get it too right very cool very cool yeah so kind of wrapping up here but like you know you're just starting your journey a couple months old like what is the next month to you know future hold for you jack like i know you want to tackle tiktok shop hard but like what is the next month kind of ongoing look like for you yeah, yeah. So definitely doubling down on brands, doubling down on making better videos, as well as pushing more of, uh, I wanted to share more of my journey. So I've been doing yeah. that more on YouTube, building my personal brand, like you've seen on Twitter. Um, and yeah, just getting more calls in, helping more people. I found the longer that I'm in this, the happier I get when trying to help people and get that uh, same money for people. Because um, like we talked about earlier was I really loved being able to provide for my family and helping others i found that like i flourish in that and the more that i do that the better that everything else gets for me so the Mm -hmm. more um positivity i put out to whether it's like my friends my family helping other people um i feel like that that always comes back in the end so yeah definitely working on the personal brand and pushing out way more uh videos 
Got it. Yeah. And then, you know, I'll make sure uh, our team puts all your um, contact information, your Twitter, your YouTube, and the show notes. And uh, yeah, that kind of closes it out. Any kind of last remarks uh, out there that you had for prospective Uh, people? Yeah. If anyone wants to get started, yeah. Uh, Just remember it's, it's, it's a long game. You just got to keep going. It's all mindset and uh, never quit because that's how you know that it's not going to work out. You just got to keep going. All right. And that concludes my interview with Jacqueline, a TikTok shop affiliate. She's had a great story from, you know, just starting, talking about what inspires her, how does she did it and how to get to that six figure month, which is kind of what everyone's after. Um, amazing story. So again, thank you, Jacqueline, for uh, being a guest. And that concludes it for this episode. Catch you on the other side. Thanks, guys.